have asked a preacher question that came in uh, via email. And uh, Brother Carl, it has to do with a passage of scripture um, in Matthew 5, 18, 19, and 20. And it's, it's kind of sandwiched right in the middle of uh, what's known as the Sermon on the Mount, just after the Beatitudes. And Jesus says, Do not think I've come to abolish the law of prophets. I'm not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until it's accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Uh, the statement is, uh, this is an oxymoronic statement in his, uh, the, the uh, writer's mind to many because he came to fulfill the law. And uh, I, I can see that clearly in the yes. verses. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure oxymoronic too much, but uh, there's a point of emphasis here. Well, there is. And, and, and to the listener, first of all, let me thank you for listening. Second of all, let me thank you for writing in. And this is a very good question. A lot of people have it. Uh, the bottom line is it sounds like Jesus is saying, on the one hand, you don't have to keep the law. But on the other hand, if you don't, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it, it, but, but here's the thing. Here's the context. He start, there's two key words here, fulfill and exceeds. He said, I came to uh, fulfill the law, okay, not to abolish. Now, by the way, the word law, he says to abolish the law or the prophets. You see, that's, that's a key word, law or the prophets. In other words, he's talking about the word of God. That's how the ancient Hebrews referred to what we would call the Old Testament, the law and the prophets, the word of God. The problem is the Pharisees would take the word of God and would add literally, and I could we could do a whole show on this. I could give you examples that are astounding, absurd. They would add thousands of rules and regulations to show you how to keep the law, and mm -hmm. then they would lord it over the people and enslave right. the people in these rules and regulations, and then they would call those rules and regulations the law. But they weren't the law. And so Jesus is talking about the Word of God. He said, I didn't come to abolish the Word of God. He said, but I came to fulfill the Word of God to fill it full and he did in other words jesus is the lamb of god that's why we don't sacrifice lambs in the temple anymore he is the lamb of right. god he came to fulfill but until he came the command of god's word was to sacrifice the lambs why because it was pointing to the ultimate coming of jesus christ mm -hmm. so that's all he meant by that i came to fulfill the word of god okay and then when he goes on to say so anyone who relaxes the least of these commandments and teaches them to be called be called the least in, in heaven Heaven. But he said, but I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. What he's saying is, look, their righteousness is based upon their made up rules and regulations. They think by keeping the law of God's word and then adding to it, somehow God owes them heaven. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm telling you, your righteousness needs to exceed theirs. Well, the, the response 2000 years ago would have been, well, that's impossible. To which Jesus would have said, right which is why you need the blood of the Lamb. That's right. And that's how our righteousness exceeds the Pharisees, is that we're willing to bow our knee and say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. You died for us. We, we submit. Put us under your blood. Therefore, we are declared righteous mm -hmm. in your sight. So to the listener and to the writer, that's what the, all of that means. There's no contradiction. There's nothing oxymoronic. Jesus is speaking to a crowd 2,000 years ago who understood every word he said. And he was saying, look, you can put your faith in me. Put your faith in me. I'm the one that's going to shed it on Calvary's cross. I'm the one that's going to come out of a grave. And, and that's what it means.